Part 2 of Tales of Versaria. Sorry about that fast camera movement. I have to get used to being very gentle with the mouse. I turn it down, but quick turns are very important in combat. So this is the outside of the Shrine of Tranquility, or the Shrine with no name. They put fucking detail into it. It'd be cool if there were islands on the horizon, but I understand. They can't go doing everything that would be awesome. Meow! Hi! What? Hmm? Wanna jump into my lap or something, you silly kitten? being cute. Why? I swear, 364 days out of the year, you're a menace to society. And the one day, the one singular day, and you decide to be the cutest and most adorable kitten of all time. You're not even a kitten. You're like, Ancient in cat years. This place isn't safe. That hole's gotten bigger. I've told them a thousand times they ought to build a fence, but they keep saying it's forbidden land. Even Celica used to scare me with it. She was always, This is a gateway to the underworld. Well, I'm too old to keep falling for that nonsense. Please check your notes on prior conversations and see where that foreshadowing might come in handy. Let's continue. <laughs> yeah! This game sets up a lot of dialogue, so if you do go and talk to every single person, you get payoffs later. Some of them much later. Dodged a little later, I would have gotten the parry off. Is that all? Ah, active character took no damage. Plus 10. Difficulty bonus, item free bonus, enemy stuns, KO free victory. So now if I go to, I think it's 2? No. 4? No. 3? Yes. You can see I've started getting actual, like, 2 EXP on some of these. And I got a little less on this one because I put it on late. That's on me. Don't worry about the other menus. They're a surprise tool that will help us later. Notice that I've started doing a few mix-ups in my combo. I'm technically not supposed to be allowed to do that yet, but it's cool. The vest does not care about the laws of fight dynamics. The vest decides to combo anyways. <sighs> That's a cringe reference. Wait, 
the boars I hunted. Are you there? Maxim three, never waver once your sword is drawn. Control your feelings to control the tide of battle. So, special moves. So, in the middle of combat, you are allowed to change your moves to whatever you want them to be. So, basically, this is combo 1, combo 2, combo 3, combo 4. So, I can do up, left, left, left. I can do up, left, right, up. I can do up, 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 up. So many fucking possibilities. And these are supposed to be like A, B, Y, and X, or whatever you have on your controller. These also, as you can see, have little EXP bars as well. For each time you use them, they get a little bit better. So, what do I want this to replace? Cheering it. A hidden earth that launches a burning ring. It is especially effective against beasts. You can see it takes 13 energy and is a lot more expensive. So, what I am going to do... Is it any time I hit the right key in the middle of any combo, immediately going into a Searing Edge. So, this allows me to do that. Quite effective. Ow. I did it. Cirrus. An exorcist art. Pride and anxiety. Pity for the enemy. Thrill of victory. Your emotions run too hot. That will be your downfall. Oh. Agreed. And it's one of her virtues as well. Huh? Yes, I know. But even so, she's got to... Arthur? Arthur's fourth maxim. Never let your guard down, even when victorious. Got it. In any case, this should be enough to buy Lafayette's medicine. I'll drop the prick of boars off at the shop before I head out. Head out where? The person I was supposed to meet is late. I don't think I'll be home tonight. I came out here to let you know. You'll have to pick Boy. up the medicine yourself. Don't destroy my chair, kitten. Right. One more thing. I saw a group of demons near the village. If you're attacked, run away. Am I clear? No way! I, I can handle a bunch of- Demons can only be challenged by those with the talent for exorcism. That's the cold logic of the world. Your new emotions can change it. Do you think- I could become an exorcist? Why is it you think that birds fly? Why? Well, without flying, they couldn't find food. It takes a particular innate talent to be an exorcist. Unfortunately, very few humans have it within themselves. All right. Tomorrow is Selica's Memorial Day. 
I'll be back as soon as I can. Hurry back. I'll make you a quiche, just the way she taught me. Now, Ceres, I believe, was mentioned once earlier. I wonder if those prickled boars were brothers. Maybe I should have let them go. But then, how would I pay for Lofi's medicine? Hunting took care of that. And it means food for us as well. I had no other choice. It was a rational decision. But the fact that I'm still worrying about it shows that my feelings are getting the better of me. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. What is it? Button 2? Yes, button 2. So even outside of combat, so you can see there's semi-auto. If I hit control, that's manual, auto, and semi-auto. On auto, the game will just play itself for you during combat. You don't need to do anything, your character will walk up to enemies and beat them up. Semi-auto means that when I hit attack, it won't attack. It will instead move up closer to the enemy and then attack, which makes sense. Because otherwise, you would have to do a lot of aiming, and it would be very difficult. But you can set it to that if you want. I don't recommend it, but it's there. So, you can see there's a bunch of different options. There's Break Souls, there's the Arts List. So, you can allow the game to automatically choose these. And that is under the You Decide tab. So when I hit down, the game will decide what it thinks the best move should be. Now, we have... Uh, Tearing Thorn, Gouging Spin... So we don't actually have a Slicing Foot option which I believe is the very quick one that uh, you decide has been choosing for me. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this, as it's a quick hit. So I can do up or left to start with that. And then go into Gouging Spin or Searing Edge. And then there's Rising Moon at the end. So all of my skills are available, but after I do my first hit, I am no longer able to do uh, tearing thorn or slicing foot. I have to do one of these, unless you decide randomly picks it for me. So, yeah. There's also different tags on skills. We'll worry about those when the game explains them. So for now, I don't believe I have to go and talk to everybody again. I think everybody just has the same dialogue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, her. Nico, here for groceries? Yep. And <laughs> you must have been out hunting. Yeah, it was a good haul. Look at you, lady breadwinner. If you were a boy, I think I'd be in love. Good thing I'm a girl. Oh, yeah? You want to do something about your style, then? Uh, yeah. I kind of broke my comb. So get a new one. Sure, I'd like to, but... Hey, mister! How about a sale on combs for the pretty girl? <laughs> huh? Oh, you two need something? I'm fine, Nico. I'm just here to pick up medicine for Lafayette. Oh, Velvet. I already told Arthur, but... I'm afraid the medicine hasn't come in yet. What? Why not? Is it because of the demons? Seems like the demon blight's really taking a toll on the city. There's even a group of them lurking around here now. When's it coming, then? I can't say. And I don't know how much it will cost. Oh, no. Ugh, what is wrong with Nick Gand? Like, don't they have an army or something? Those guys? The demons already routed them a while back. But... We're safe here, right? After all, your brother-in-law's an exorcist. You so sure about that? Arthur can't even use his right hand anymore. Poor fellow couldn't even protect his own wife and child. Let me know when the medicine gets in. Uh, uh of course. For now, here, on the house. Velvet! 
You didn't forget, did you? You promised to teach me how to make your special quiche. You mean for that apprentice animal doctor you had your eye on? You were serious? Beyond serious. Please. This is life or death for me. But I thought your folks weren't keen on the two of you dating. Who cares what people think? The important thing is my feelings. <laughs> I like the way you talk. If I were a boy, I think I'd be in love. Darn right. I hereby dub the two of you girlfriends. Fluffy well, must be starving by now. I'd better hurry home. Hey. Orthy and Russ seem pretty down today. I know. They've been whimpering like this for an hour now. Well, they've always been a bit wimpy. The other day, that kitty Rolo chased both of them up a tree by himself. They're hopeless. Whenever it's thundering out, they both dive into my bed, shivering. Orthy, Russ, shape up. You're Nico's bodyguards, right? Start acting like it. <coughs> They're completely hopeless. Maybe. But they're so cute, so I forgive them. Celica taught you how to make your special quiches, right, Velvet? Yeah, but mine aren't nearly as good as hers. Don't be modest! They're fantastic! Simple, yet elegant. That's because there's a secret in the cheese and the dough. You should try selling them in Taliesin. I'm sure they'd be a hit. We could make them together and take them on the road! <gasps> we could even wear matching uniforms! Would it make more money than hunting Frickleboars? Definitely, maybe. Even more so <laughs> Definitely if you maybe. Up a bit in front of the customers. <laughs> then it might be worth a try. I do want to buy Lothi a nice heavy winter coat. And Arthur's gloves are in tatters, so he needs new ones. Oh, don't be so boring! I get where you're coming from, but come on! Think big! Dream, Velvet! Dream! Think big? Hmm, no thanks. I want a peaceful life with Lothi and Arthur. That's all. You're impossible. Then again, maybe that's why your quiches taste so darn good. <sighs> and the foreshadowing gods were happy this day. Adorable girlfriends. It's a good thing that absolutely nothing terrible or tragic happens. Oh god, no, don't tell me that there's new dialogue for some of the people. No! No! Jeez, burgers. Hey. So, yes, that door is now blocked. Hooray. We've already done the dialogue of doom over there. Uh, yeah, they keep saying, hmm, I'm going to have a happy, peaceful life, and nothing bad's going to happen. Absolutely nothing is going to go wrong. So you could mistake this game for a goddamn life sim or farming game. If it weren't for the cutscene earlier. Huh. 
Hi, Celica. I'm back. I can't believe it's been seven years since we lost you. And the baby you carried. Oh, drat. I forgot to bring your princessias. I know how much you, Mom, and Dad all loved those flowers. And I know your child would have too. I'm sorry. I'll pick some from the cake tomorrow. Welcome home, Velvet. Fluffy, I told you to stay in bed. I was only up for a little. Look, your fever hasn't gone down a bit. Go lie down and I'll cook dinner. I'm sorry. What's this? A compass. It uses a magnet to tell you which way you're facing. Woohoo! You can use the sun and stars for that. And what'll you do if it's cloudy, huh? Thanks to this invention, we'll even be able to voyage across the ocean. See? It's designed to stay level, so your heading will be true even when the ship is rolling with the waves. Pretty neat, right? If you say so, Luffy. Come on, it's a must-have for any adventure. Can't you see how useful it is? You can tell me more about it later. Did they hurt you? Not a scratch. And I brought back plenty. I can hear Arthur already. Gosh, Velvet. I think it's time you learned all my secret arts. He isn't coming home tonight, is he? How do you know that? Sarah stopped by and told me. Arthur's Moloch? Huh. You really can talk to Malakine, can't you? Yeah. Arthur says I've got exorcist potential. No kidding. I think you'll be an exorcist to rival even him. I can tell you've been learning all sorts of things from his book collection. I really want to become an exorcist. I want to go traveling with you and see all the wonders of the world. I'll hunt and chop firewood. And if demons come for us, I'll defend you. I wish... I wish I could do that. <sighs> You'll get there, Lafayette. set. It should only take... Oh, 20 years tops. It won't take me that long. Oh yeah? You better prove it to me then. Start with this lovely meatball stew I cooked. Eat every last mouthful, even if you don't feel hungry. And take your medicine, no matter how nasty it tastes. No tricks, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Right, cooking time. First, I need to light the stove. The day before Scarlet Night, Sis went prickle boar hunting on her own. She's almost as good a fighter as Arthur, so I know those prickle boars don't stand a chance. But I worry that she's too athletic to land a husband. Maybe she should try to be more ladylike. Little scamp. He just knew I'd be reading this, didn't he? Uh huh. Isn't this Arthur's book? Is Loffy really reading stuff this dense? The nameless <laughs> Imperium. Gonna squint his eyes right out. Um, was there anything else nameless in the history? Any other nameless place that had been described as a gateway to a place? And was there anyone else who had described perhaps uh, gateways to bad places in a metaphorical sense? <laughs> <laughs> so easy to light Arthur's firewood. I wonder what his trick is. Um, Velvet? Could you not put any spinach in the stew? Huh. 
You'll never grow up if you're picky with your food, you know. Mm, I know, but but just for today. <laughs> fine, fine. I'll leave out the spinach just this once, and I'll make it that curry flavor you like. Really? Thanks, Velvet. There's some of Arthur's special curry spice upstairs, isn't there? See it. Some of the dialogue in this game is just to get points across, and it seems a little bit wooden at times as it explains the lore and of there the world you to you. Not spicy hot, but uh, then oh you've so got delicious. the but somewhat yeah, subtle hints that are dropped. And she had very important things to talk about. She's coming over in the next couple days, so be on your best behavior. I will. I'm glad you've got a good friend. Yeah, we've known each other since forever. Still. Miko falling in love? I can barely wrap my head around it. Lofi, you know, if there's a girl you like, you'll tell Big Sister all about it, right? A g girl Hmm, you're a stubborn little brat, so you might need an older girl to keep you under control. Oh, and she's gotta be a good cook. A pro in the kitchen is a success at life. Knock it off, Velvet! You should be more worried about your own love life. Me? I I've got enough on my mind. For one thing, I've got to cook for you and Arthur since Salika is gone. Besides, getting crushes on strange men? I just don't see what so... <coughs> <laughs> Luffy, what's wrong? No one takes ladders down in this house. Are you alright? I'll bring you some water. I'm fine. You just said something funny is all, and it made me choke a bit. <sighs> as long as you're okay. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. <laughs> Who knows what the future holds? I do. Yeah. I played the game before. But what more can I do? And I've I'm got not a telling. To look after my little brother, and I'm serious about it. I know, but I'm trying to look after you too. I want you to be happy. That's all. And it's not just me. Arthur worries about you, too. Well, we're family, right? Yeah, that's what families do. Thanks, Luffy. For you, I'd kill every last prickle boar in the forest if it came down to it. <sighs> oh, what am I doing? I need to hurry and get dinner ready. <sighs> As I was saying, there's things that are... There's enough hints for people to put the story together on their own, and there's also enough stuff that's set up for way later, intermingled with the somewhat less on-par dialogue. Like, some of the stuff, of course she'd know, like she's been cooking without Celica for the last seven years, but she's saying it a lot in order to emphasize that this is what she's doing, and to provide people who skip stuff to know her character, because... There's, <laughs> she says it enough times, Good no matter boy. what you skip, you you'll get her character. Your medicine. Well, I did promise. Tomorrow's a scarlet night. Yeah, just like that night that changed our lives. Um, Velvet, may I sleep next to you tonight? Of course. Okay, let's see. Today, I've got to dry some meat and use that cheese I've been saving to make a quiche for... Hmm? Luffy? You little... Where have you gone? You better not have gone to the village alone. Uh, I bet your fever hasn't even gone down. Yeah, there's a 
buttons to like move the camera and stuff, I think. But I don't remember what those are at the moment. Anyway, back to Dialogueville. How long has it been? 30 fucking minutes of dialogue! <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I guess. Uh, damn it. I want to move the story forward, but I also have to recognize that holy shit. Uh, this is why I didn't want to do this game, was because I knew there was going to be so much fucking dialogue in it that we wouldn't be able to do consistent, accent-focused episodes. But if you guys got drawn into the story as much as I did, it probably felt like five fucking minutes. <sighs> Alright. I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. And this episode, we're going to hopefully finish up with this backstory part and move into the main game. Hopefully. This has been Vess, Episode 2, Tales of Berseria, and uh, yeah, I was going to hit the stop recording button. Whoa!